welcome to Just Jesus Taste Tester 2. Taste Tester 2. And as I said before, when you join up or sign up in the weeks to come on the Just Jesus course, then you'll be have made available to you a set of notes like this. Hallelujah. And we'll track through these notes in the lessons in a bit more in depth as we go into the proper lessons. But the, 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 the sheet of paper or the notes before you will have a title, it will have an introduction, a Bible reading, it will have a word study section in which we develop the words within that main verse a little bit more in depth to see what it's really talking about. And of course, as we track through those words and that verse of scripture, I'll begin to unpack it to you. And then we'll get to the explanation part of the notes, which summarizes what's been said so far. And then there is an other scripture section, which relate to the subject. The other scriptures will relate to the subject at hand, and it helps us to unpack the subject a little bit more according to the scriptures. And then we'll have a simple apply section, which kind of shows us how to apply that in your week and in the months to come, simply through your life. And then we've finished with a kind of question section, which after the lesson, you can begin to answer those questions. So what do I ask from people who kind of sign up for the Just Jesus course? That as you listen to the lesson, that you listen to it maybe at least two times and don't forget you don't have to do it all at once you can even do it while you're washing up you can do it while you're driving in your lorry you can do it while you you know you're kind of preparing the meal you can you can break it you can do it in your lunch hour you can break it down into in stop and start the video but what i do ask people is not to rush on into other lessons lesson one lesson a week is enough and that you write five bullet points Five, no more, but five, up to five bullet points of what really spoke to you from the lesson. Because that's where the Holy Spirit is really trying to touch your heart. And then, of course, that you answer the questions and really meditate on what you've been taught. So, without further ado, let's do, do Taste Tester 2. And the subject and the lesson today is justification. So, I'll read the introduction and let's crack on. When you became a Christian, a whole new life started. You are now made right with God. I'll read that again. When you became a Christian, a whole new life started. You are now made right with God. And so again, when we talk about in Christ, we're talking about everything he has done for you in his death and resurrection. Everything he bought for you. Everything he achieved for you. Everything he's blessed you with. Because he has fixed you in these things. Last time we talked about the new creation. And so as we develop in these lessons, we're looking actually at what this new creation has. And one of the things as a Christian that now resides in you, because Jesus resides in you, is that you are now made right with God. And you are now made righteous before God, in right standing with God. And that's what this basic term justification means. Because in Adam, of course, we wasn't right with God. When he fell, we was born in sin. And that's why we had to have a saviour. We had to believe on Jesus, didn't we? He's the one that has made us right with God. He's the one that has keeps us right with God. He is the one who sustains us to be right with God. And so again, when were you made right with God? The way sometimes as Christians you can struggle is you get made right with God when you are born again. And then your mind begins to think of all the negative aspects of your life. And we all have faults, of course we do. And we all have areas of our lives that we need to change, don't we? And we need to reflect. And what I mean by change, we need to reflect the life of Jesus, the character of Jesus that is in us already, already there, but we have to live it out in life. 
But the reality is we can't make ourselves any more right with God than we are in Christ already. I'll say that again because it's so powerful. We cannot make us any more right with God than we are already. And sometimes as Christians we can strive. We can do things that we think will make us more right with God. Well, folks, listen to this scripture. Being justified freely. This is a free gift by what? His grace. And where is it from? In Christ. So you can never make yourself right with God in the first place. So now you're a Christian, don't try and make yourself right with God by doing what seems just spiritual things and things that are good. And we are to reflect Christ, of course we are. And we are to do things, of course we are. But we don't do things in church, we don't read our Bible, we don't pray to get more right with God. We pray because we are already right with God. I, I read the scriptures, you should read the scriptures not to get more right with God but because you're already right with God and when you read your Bible it begins to show you what Christ has done in you I go to church not to be more right with God I go to church because I have already been made right with God and I want to give him thanks and rejoice in what he's done you see how it needs to flip there? We need to change our view. We're already right with God in Christ freely. It hasn't cost us anything but believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it's his grace, folks. It's by his grace in Christ Jesus. And so let's just turn to the word study section in this taste tester today. And we see the word justified, and I really want to just unpack a little bit this word for you. The word justified means to render righteous as it ought to be. I'll say that again, to render righteous as it ought to be. Adam, when he fell, he brought us all into a place of unrighteousness. We wasn't in right standing before God. But Christ has rendered us. He has made us righteous. This is, isn't just a theological term. This is not just a teaching. I want you to understand where you're listening to me right now. You who have believed on Jesus are now righteous in Christ. You can't make yourself more righteous. You are righteous in Jesus and that's why this course is called just Jesus we can live out that righteousness through our actions of course we can and it, it will begin to flow through you in your actions when you begin to acknowledge but if you think you're not righteous if you think and believe because you, you're looking at through your own mindset that you're not in right standing before God instead of living out that righteousness Instead of living out that character and life of Christ in you, you'll spend so much wasted time trying to become something you already are. I'll say that again. You will waste so much time trying to become something you already are when you could have spent that time just reflecting who you are in Christ. You see the point I'm trying to make? That it's in you because of Jesus. It's gifted to you because of Jesus. And it's a gift. So reflecting it is what we do now. Rather than trying to get it. Hallelujah. So we've been rendered righteous. We've been made righteous. Hallelujah. As we should have been right from the beginning. It means to declare. Pronounce one to be just. And righteous. So what does this mean between render or made righteous and declared righteous? There's two different facets to this justification. That we have been made righteous. It's our new spiritual life. 
Before we were saved, before you were saved, we wasn't just before God. We wasn't righteous before God. But now in Christ, because we believe, we've been made right with God. We're on friendly terms with God. Our very state of being is righteous before God. So that's who we are. Let me say that. It's who we are. But then he goes on to say, he pronounces us righteous and just. So God has not just made us who, is, who we are in Christ. Now he's pronounced it like a, I suppose, like a, a, a judge in a, 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 in a court case, I suppose. He declares us not guilty. He says we are now declared to be righteous because we are. Again, this isn't just theological. It's a fact. So what does that mean? When you're low, when you're down, when you feel dirty before God, you're not dirty before God. We might do things that are wrong and we say sorry to the Lord, we pick ourselves up and we get on. But the reality is, folks, sometimes if we keep seeing ourselves as dirty, rotten sinners, as we keep seeing ourselves dirty, we will live that way. But the moment we begin to acknowledge that we're righteous in Christ and by Christ, not of ourselves, but by Jesus and in Jesus, it's who he's made us to be, then we will reflect that image as we see that image. As I've said before, what you see, you believe, and what you believe, you will do, you will live. And so if we, we believe we're dirt and rotten sinners, after we've been born again, then what's the difference of when we wasn't born again, when we was dirty, rotten sinners? You see, there's been a change. We're a new creation. And that new creation is now righteous and in right standing before God. So even when you do something wrong, we don't hide from God. And many people I know sometimes hide from God because they feel so dirty. No, we run to God. Because we're in right standing with him. And he shows us how to live with, from the new nature that is now in us. It says freely. Freely. And this means without a cause, it's undeserved. And so everything that Christ has done in making you righteous and pronouncing you righteous is undeserved. So as a Christian... Stop trying to earn something that was undeserved in the first place. I'll say that again. As a Christian, as you walk in Christ, stop trying to earn something you received when it was undeserved in the first place. We just give thanks for it. We have just received it and we give thanks and we love him for it, don't we? Hallelujah. So in this final time in this second taste tester let's just go to the apply section on the notes and it says this and i really want you to take this away with you this week don't listen to the guilt that the devil tries to remind you of by suggesting that you're no better now as you was before so that's the first thing. I'll say that again. I'll read that again. It's so important. Don't listen to the guilt that the devil tries to remind you of by suggesting that you know better now than you was before. And sometimes memories come in and our mind can be affected. And, and, and that's a tool for suggesting that we know better now. No, look, we're in Christ. And he has declared you and he has made you righteous and right before him. He has done that by his grace and he's done it freely. It hasn't cost you anything but faith in just Jesus. Hallelujah. So let Christ work that has made you righteous be the guide for your life from now on. So if the devil comes and whispers in your ear, people say, Lord, you're... You're like so-and-so. No, I'm a new creation and I'm righteous before him. And because of that, when challenges come to my life and when I need to change certain characteristics of my life 
and habits of my life. I won't change them out of striving or guilt. I will change them from the power of the righteous life of Jesus Christ in me. So until next time on Just Jesus, God bless you.